Hey guys, this is going to be a follow-up video to System Test 23 where I was unable to get this water flow switch to activate on my DMP panel. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend you take a minute and go watch it, otherwise you'll be pretty confused here. So in that video, I went to do a demonstration of this water flow switch over here like I mentioned, which is wired into this uh, pop-it module down here on my DMP system, and I could not get it to activate. And I know this looks pretty terrible how these are mounted. These used to be mounted up here, but this enclosure is so waxy and shiny as you can see. Uh, no matter what I've used, double stick tape or hot glue, it ends up sliding straight down and taking some of that waxy coating with it. So what I might end up doing is sanding it off a little bit so it sticks a little bit better. Um, but the problem is, it wasn't just the water flow switch that wouldn't activate. After I filmed System Test 23, I found that none of this would activate. Um, and what I ended up tracing it back to was this module right here. So the module in question was this first module right here, which is assigned to zone 502, and it's the module that's connected to the uh, Autopulse's trouble contacts to report on the trouble condition. Now the issue here is that because I don't have batteries in the Autopulse panel, I took this uh, zone assignment, 502, out of the programming completely. So it's still wired in and it's still functioning on the loop, but it has no zone assignment to report to on the DMP. Now that was fine until the other day, and you'll see these two modules, the one directly above it and this one, still have covers mounted on them, and that's because unlike the rest of the modules in this panel, these two are fitted with tamper switches, which require the cover to remain on so that the magnet on the inside of the cover can activate the uh, magnetic reed switch for the tamper condition. And what happened was, the cover on this module became slightly loose. So what was happening was, with it being the first module on the loop, it was constantly trying to report the tamper condition back to the panel, and it was getting no response because there was no zone assignment in the panel. So it flooded the whole uh, data channel for this, because it's only two conductors. Uh, flooded that with its tamper message, and nothing else could get through. And I think that's why I was getting intermittent results from the um, water flow switch over here because occasionally the message from that poppet module would get through while other times it was flooded out by this 502 module. And I ended up discovering that when I kind of had a feeling that having this module kind of sitting here dead uh, had something to do with it. So I added it back into the system and immediately I got a whole string of tamper messages that were backdated um, from when it first popped up a couple days ago. So um, that's that. Now that the, uh, the entire loop now works, now we can go ahead and test out the water flow switch. So without much further delay, let's go ahead and test this out. There's the pre-signal. And now it's in full alarm. So you can see we're getting two alarm messages on the keypad. One is that Halon system trouble that I just added back into the system. And the other one is the Riser 12 alarm. Also, I figure I should mention that the reason you're not hearing any of the alarm devices on the SXLEX uh, activating is because while I was working on this, I bypassed the zone for the sprinkler riser so that I didn't have to constantly listen to the alarms going off while I was fiddling around with it. So back over at the keypad we can go ahead and silence this. And then I can perform a sensor reset. But you're going to notice that this Halon system trouble is not going to clear. And that's the whole reason that I didn't have that zone programmed into the system in the first place. So you can see the keypad is still in alarm. So I have the same kind of thing set up on the SXL panel, except for that's connected to a hardwired zone that's not being used, so I guess that's a little bit different. But what I'm going to try to do with this uh, 502 zone is change the alarm action settings so that it recognizes something like an open condition as an alarm instead of the short circuit condition from that relay. 
So hopefully what that'll let me do is keep it online and reporting correctly, but then also um, kind of hide it so that I don't have to constantly have this alarm condition for the auto pulse panel on the system. Uh, but the good news is that hopefully I will be getting batteries for both of these panels. I've been trying to do that for a while. So pretty soon I shouldn't even have to worry about this and I will have full functionality for this DMP system reporting on the troubles of both panels because right now I don't have that functionality whatsoever with the two zones being disabled. So I appreciate you guys patience with the last uh, system test video and hope you enjoyed this little special, edi special edition test. So thank you guys for watching.